He is in his seventh season as Arizona head coach. Uh, pleasure to have here on the Rich Eisen Show for the first time, Sean Miller. How are you, coach? Great, Rich. Great to be on. I, uh, I'm a big NFL fan, and uh, I've caught you at the Combine, and congratulations okay. on your new 40-yard dash time. Well, you know what? Um, you are now inspiring me, Coach, because uh, <laughs> I, you know I've heard a little birdie that you have dropped weight yourself. Uh, I think you and I are only apart in terms of age by about six months. Yeah. So you're in fighting weight, too. Yeah, Sean. yeah. No, thank you. Thank you. I feel a lot better, and uh, you know, sometimes I think in sports, you can get that one track mind, and the next thing you know, you're you're on the wrong track in a lot of other areas. So uh, hopefully, I can I can keep it going. Well, I mean, and again, we're referring to uh, the the weight loss that you have uh, undertaken, for the lack of a better phrase. Uh, yeah. We had Pete Thamel of Sports Illustrated on in our second hour, and he did a. Uh, a piece on you that's that's uh, right now actually being posted on SI.com. At what point did you realize that you were unhealthy? You know, probably a long time ago. Uh, it's just a matter of making changes. You know, I, I think that I've always been, since I've been a little kid, very uh, driven and kind of singular focused. And basketball is, is what, you know, my passion is. And obviously between my family, I have three sons, and uh, they all play the game. And then, you know, just taking over a program like Arizona and, and uh, trying to get us to that uh, early April finish in this tournament that we're in this year, you know, next thing you know, seven years goes by pretty quickly. So um, I just – this summer um, – kind of had that moment in time where I said enough is enough and I changed and I think I changed forever it's just uh it's, it's something that I needed to do a little bit earlier but I'm glad I finally did it that's a dietary thing and I, I is it a lifestyle thing because I imagine as a coach you can go down that rabbit hole yeah you know the thing about college basketball is you know it's 35 games and you're, you're on the road and you know after the game guess what you eat you eat pizza mm -hmm. Uh, you, you know, in pregame, you start to almost get into player mode, and what you forget is those guys are at a different point in their life, and uh, certainly much more active, no matter how active we try to be outside of the game. Uh, so I think for me it was a combination of both um, renewed exercise at a very, very high level and just being smarter with, uh, with what I choose to eat. Two-time Pac-12 Coach of the Year and uh, from his years in Xavier, former A-10 Coach of the Year, Sean Miller here on the Rich Eisen Show. So I guess what happens now? Do you, do you look at film of either Vanderbilt and Wichita State or do you sit back, wait for the result of the game and then, and then start digging in about who you're going to see in Providence? No, we're really full speed ahead on, on both um, and really almost four because – you know, when you if, if you're fortunate enough to get by the game on Thursday, and that will be a heck of a battle regardless if we play Vanderbilt or Wichita. You don't have a lot of time, so you just you kind of have to focus with uh, a lot going on. But but you're right. For us, it's so much different this year in a tournament. I've never been a part of an NCAA tournament where you don't know who you're playing. So with that comes some added anxiety. I, I guess what I try to feel like is that both Vanderbilt and Wichita State are completely focused on each other. Heck, they're in Dayton, Ohio right now and getting ready to play a big game tomorrow night. So we have to take advantage of maybe some additional rest. And regardless of who we play out of those two, you know, they're really good coaches, programs, and I think certainly capable of beating anybody in the field, including us. Sean Miller here on the Rich Eisen Show. This is not your first rodeo, obviously, as coaching and playing, too. I mean, you were playing with uh, Pitt uh, with Jerome Lane to send it in Jerome. Were you on the yeah. court, by the way, when he when he when Jerome sent yeah, it in? Rich, in my house, that's called the pass. I was the guy who gave him the ball. Mm. I passed it to him. So mm. I'm for I, I'm forever have credibility <laughs> with anybody that that I was playing because that. You know, inevitably, early February each year, they start to show that again and again. And, heck, it's, it's hard to believe, you know, I, I, looking at it now, I think it's almost 26 years wow. since it happened. And uh, But it's almost like yesterday. It was an amazing moment. Well, it's also a great uh, coaching tool because Jerome could not have sent it in without being delivered the ball. That's right. right. It's the proper time. It's just the way it's, <laughs> it's got to work. So uh, w what is the difference between playing and getting ready coaching a tournament I mean how do you get your kids minds right with all this pressure and scrutiny well I think the one similarity rich is you know you can't lose sight of of the NCAA tournament is the deal you know we, we can try to sugarcoat it talk about a lot of other things but we all coach in this game play in this game when you visit 
when you envision making your college decision, you want to pick a program that can be in this tournament, that can make a run towards a Final Four. So when that time is upon us, uh, sometimes it's been a long, hard journey to get here. And, you know, number one, I, I really try to rekindle the joy, make sure that all of us, whether we're coaches or players in the, in the team and the program that I'm with, that we understand that this is a great thing. This is a fun thing. Like you said, there's certainly pressure to perform well. But I think it's good pressure. It's pressure that we all signed up for. And, you know, I don't think there's a much better feeling in sports than advancing in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, and, and then if you're fortunate to do that, then you um, go to Louisville. So that's what you got. You got a trip to Providence and then a trip to Louisville. And should things work out, a trip to Houston. How, how do you plan for all of that stuff? I've always been curious. When you've got kids and you're going on the road and you're taking plane flights and you're trying to survive in advance, I mean, that has got to be part of the equation in this whole circumstance. Right. What we try to do is just simplify it. You know, it's a small picture, and it's a, it's really a four-team tournament that all of us enter in the first weekend. You know, we're, we're, we're hoping to advance. If you lose, everybody knows what you do. You go home. Yeah. If you win, you have one day in between, and you're going to play the winner of your four-team tournament that you're in. If you happen to be uh, good enough, and recently, we really have been great in, in getting to that Sweet 16. Then that's that's the prize that you have a week in between, and then you enter a second four-team tournament, and that second four-team tournament takes you to a Final Four. So you know, I think sometimes you can really get carried away with all 68, 64. It's somewhat confusing, Rich, because when we go to Providence, there's eight teams, four of those that are in a completely different region. You know, so I think for us, we try to clarify for our team who we're playing and what we need to do. And then there's seniors all over the place for you, Coach. I mean, you got seniors everywhere, which I imagine this time of year is something that you you try to to lean on. Is it is the one and done player something that you you try not to go towards? Uh, how, how do you read into this? How should I read into no, this? No, we have coach? a blend. Um, you know, in recent years, Stanley Johnson was a one and done. He's playing with the Detroit Pistons as the eighth pick. You know, Aaron Gordon was, was somebody a year earlier. You saw Aaron in the dunk contest, very, very talented, and playing with the Orlando Magic. Both of those guys were with us for a year, and they were fun to coach and a, and a big reason why our team was so good. But you need balance. Uh, this year's team – you know, we have a, a very good freshman in Alonzo Trier, but w you're right. We have experience. And in Caleb Tarzuski and Gabe York's career, you know, they've been a part of two Elite Eights and a Sweet 16. So not only are they seniors, but they've won a lot of games in previous tournaments. They know what to expect. And you're right. We're, we're really leaning on them to kind of carry the torch for us. You know, if we would play Wichita State, they may be the one team that rivals our winning in the tournament because, you know, they have two they have two players, Baker and Van Fleet, that have won just as much as our guys. And, you know, certainly Vanderbilt. Ditto for them with a lot of their experience. Now, you're from Pennsylvania. You played in Pittsburgh. Darn, uh, you, you were uh, part of the uh, fish that saved Pittsburgh, and we'll get into that in a moment as well. Um, Coach, what, what in the world is the bias toward against Pac-12. I mean, you, you, you know all about East Coast time zone. The Pac-12 appears to not get much credit. What have you found out firsthand on this front? Well, I think that was the before. You know, if you go back maybe when my tenure began here, I would have agree agreed with you. You know, I'll, I'll give you a great example. In my second year at Arizona, we had Derek Williams and lost in the Elite Eight to Kemba Walker in UConn, who went on to win the national championship. Derek was the number two pick in the draft behind Kyrie Irving, and not a lot of people knew him. But in that same class, you know, you have Isaiah Thomas, who's at obviously an NBA All-Star, Clay Thompson, who is who's an NBA All-Star, and uh, – we, the big fellow from USC who plays uh, who plays with the Orlando Magic. All, all those guys were in the Pac-12, and at the time it was the Pac-10. And you just sensed that not everybody in America knew how good we were, this league was, and they were as players. But a few years ago, when the, the new television agreement came, you know, to me, I think it's a different age and a different day and time in the Pac-12. Everybody has the ability to watch us on all networks, obviously including ESPN. You know, the time slots. For for us are now more spread out. At one point, it was only the late game on one network. Now we're all over the place. 
I think it's a big reason why people know who Gary Payton Jr. is at Oregon State, know how terrific Oregon's team is in Utah, and Arizona, et cetera. So uh, I think for us, we're in a new day and time, and we're thankful that that time has come. And, uh, Coach, your comments about rushing the court uh, – certainly caught a lot of ears and eyes, certainly mine, and I fully agree with you. I think it's antiquated and dangerous and needs to be stopped. Have, have you gotten any headway with the Pac-12 and with other of your colleagues to try and figure out how to make sure this sort of dangerous activity stops? Yes, you know, I think the Pac-12 has been very cooperative and, um, you know, I think like you recognizes that potentially there's, there's a problem brewing in the future. And if it's not an Arizona situation, it could be somebody else. But, you know, because of how high we've been ranked the last three years, Rich, you know, we're, we're that team that when we play the road game, we get the great crowd. It's a gold out. It's a blackout. It's it's you know we played UCLA, Russell Westbrook night, and you know to me everybody's at a fever pitch as as well they should. You know it would be a great win to beat a highly ranked team, but you know when you lose them and you're going to lose a few. As much as we would like to win every game on the road, we're going to lose a few. When it happens, you know some arenas I think are better equipped to deal with it than others. And you know for me at the end of the day, it's about are my protecting our team and players, putting them in the best position to be successful and I just kind of watching how it how quickly it can happen in the emotional state of somebody who's 18 years old within five seconds of the game ending many times on a last second miss or something that went wrong a last second make by the other team you, you just you're not going to be able to control something and it's going to eventually result in a, in a bad way and I don't believe I'm the only coach that feels that way uh, but when you speak up on a topic like that, the one thing you realize is not everybody's going to agree with you. But uh, for me, I had no hidden agenda bringing it up other than I want to make sure that in the future that, that we're taken care of. And if you look at it from a bigger picture, uh, if I were a parent, I wouldn't want my son or daughter rushing the floor and putting themselves in that situation on the other side of the coin. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'm sure you heard what I heard is that I'm an old man screaming at kids to get off their lawn. <laughs> I'm seriously. I mean, I, I yeah. heard that, and you know, I mean, we're both uh, in our mid 40s. I, I, I don't think we sound antiquated right. saying that. Yeah. You know, uh, when it all comes down to it. So, uh, last a couple things for you here, Coach. Uh, Wikipedia certainly gets things wrong, but I, I just have to ask you, uh, based on some of the stuff that we read, were you on the Johnny Car? Were you on the Tonight Show? Were I was. Rich? That's yep, a true long, story. Long, long time ago, but I was doing what. Dribbling basketballs, you know, that was before, uh, you know, in today's world, young kids have those basketball goals that retract of six feet, mm -hmm. six foot five, seven feet. Sure. You know, back when we were growing up, you went to the gym, the goals wouldn't lower. So, you know, when you were young, you, you spent a lot of time handling, passing, dribbling the basketball. And, you know, I was fortunate that I grew up uh, – with a great father and, uh, and a really terrific high school basketball coach. So everywhere he went, I went, and we spent a lot of time together. And the next thing you knew, uh, heck, I could do just about anything with the basketball you could dream of, including you know dribbling four, juggling three. And uh, huh. so next thing you know, I'm not sure how it worked out, but I will tell you there's not been a month rich of my life since then that somebody doesn't bring that no up. No kidding. So that shows you how powerful that show was at that day and time. Of course. Who was the? Do, who else was on? Do you remember who the other guests from the Carson show that night was? was I you? don't know. You don't. Okay. Maybe we'll look that up and we'll 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 remind you. And so your your dribbling skills. Were you in the fish that that saved Pittsburgh as well? That film. Yep, I was at around the same time for the same reason. Uh, in that, I had about a two second uh, two second deal. I was kind of in the tryout line and I was gone. And mm -hmm. I'm not sure how that happened either. It was just near my house. I grew up in Pittsburgh, so <laughs> they invited me to be a part of it. And again, the rest is history. Uh, yeah. So, do who? Had, last question for you: Who had better handle, uh, you or Curry? Who's who's got a better handle, Steph Curry or you, Sean Miller? It, in a game, uh, Steph Curry, there's no question about it. But back in the day, when you start talking about the other side of it, sure. um, I would say I'd probably be right there. Like now, that. if anyone had seen me when I was younger do it, they, they would probably agree. The new mm. generation would probably laugh at me. But I don't know if we're going to have a chance to have a standoff anytime soon. You know, when Mariucci took the gig at Cal, he tried to keep uh, Tony Gonzalez from leaving. Did you try and keep Rob Gronkowski from leaving when you first got to campus? <laughs> Coach, did you try to? No, but we, I tell you what, though, we, uh, 
you know, we we see him from time to time when he comes back. And, uh, he's someone we love and are proud of. <laughs> and uh, what a character. What a great football player. Absolutely. <laughs> Coach, thanks again. Good luck uh, on your journey here. Thank you. Uh, and good luck finding out who you win. Uh, I mean, who, who, who you play after they win. Yeah, uh, the, appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Big fan of yours. And uh, thank you. keep up the great work. Oh, man. Thank you. That's at UA Coach Miller. Sean Miller here. The Rich Eisen Show. Weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.